Hey everyone, Leo is here continuing the video series on Azure IoT operations. Today, I have Eugene with me to talk to me about Acri. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Leo is here continuing the video series on Azure IoT operations, and I have a returning guest today. Eugene, how are you? Great. It's exciting to be back. How are yeah, you? I mean, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. You know, I was uh, waiting for a conversation. You're a returning guest. We had an awesome episode um, on Acri last time that you were here. Uh, I vividly remember the demo with the camera and everything. That was fun. And today we're here to talk again about Acri, but also share, you know, with with our with our viewers some of the things that are also coming down the down the pipe, and also what's the current integration with Azure IoT operations. Last time that you were here, we didn't even talk about that because there was no integration so we're here today we're here to talk about that um eugene before we get going who you are what is it that you do hi so yeah i'm eugene i'm a product manager in azure edge and currently working on Acri. Um, i do a lot of open source work but now i've been involved in working on azure IoT operations as well and i'm really excited to share these updates with everyone yeah, Acre is definitely one of those uh, areas that I'm always, uh, it's always fun to talk about because it's easy to understand and you can see some things right away. So Eugene, as we're getting started with this conversation, first of all, let's recap the previous the previous conversation that we had around, around Acre. Sure, happy to. So Acre, um, as you may know, is a CNCF sandbox project, so it is open source. And it basically provides an abstraction layer, which allows you to connect to IoT Leaf devices via their protocols. Um, so in the open source, we have OPC UA, OnVIF, and UDIF. Mm -hmm. Now, these devices are registered as Kubernetes custom resources, and this allows you to um, be able to assign workloads to them, whether it be on different nodes. And even if a node goes down, um, these properties will remain on the cluster so that other nodes can pick up the lost work. Mm -hmm. And Acre is an extensible framework, so mm -hmm. developers can create connectors that they want for other protocols using our templates. And it's really optimized for a low resource environment. And you know it allows developers to be just able to write generic code instead of manually going through and writing specific code for each device. Mm -hmm. And it's built with Rust, right? Yep, and it's really optimized for the edge. Yeah, I uh, you know one of the things that uh, when I started looking at Acre, that was I believe almost two years ago, I think that at this point when I started looking at Acre from the early days, the one thing that struck me when when looking at this was the fact that the world of us starting to describe assets, right? In this case, we're talking about leaf devices, like you mentioned, like camera sensors, what have you, um, as Kubernetes resources. And again, you'll show me later on how we are getting even closer to Azure Resource Manager, which is also kind of cool. Um, that thing really kind of struck me as an evolution of how we're thinking about edge, really. Um, it's bringing those real devices, physical devices into, you know, a platform like Kubernetes. Exactly. It's kind of allowing it to be standardized and allowing other things to have access to these devices, which may be, you know, usually a bit too old or too long mm -hmm. out. All right. So I also know that you have some cool architecture diagrams to show me. So uh, let's go through those diagrams. Sure. So... This is kind of a recap as well. Um, this is just our open source Acre architecture. So mm -hmm. as you can see on the left side, we have the provisioning manifest. So this is the Acre configuration, and this is where you know the user will specify the protocol that they want to use, as mm -hmm. well as any workloads or broker you know pods that they want to deploy to these assets. So the user. Um, applies this configuration, the Acre configuration CRD is created, then Acre will read that CRD and deploy the appropriate discovery handler. It will go and find these um, leaf devices and create Acre instance CRDs in the etcd. Then um, the controller will see that and deploy any broker or workloads to connect to those devices and be able to utilize the data from so 
Eugene, you know, what you're describing here is kind of a, a deployment that is isolated in the sense that Acri is an open source or started as an open source project, right? And you can deploy that on any Kubernetes cluster. And as part of this video series, we're talking about this integration with Azure IoT operations. What can you tell me about how does that integration looks like today? Yeah, so first of all, I just want to quickly go over like, why are we even putting Acri in Azure IoT yeah. operations? operations, right? We have this open source project. And I think one of the main things is that users might feel a little anxious about using an open source project in production settings, just because it's open source. So, you know, maybe one day it will stop being maintained, or you, you don't really know what's going to happen. Um, yeah. So that's why we aim to provide the ICM level support so that customers can have the confidence to use Augury in production settings. And secondly, it's compatible with any Arc enabled cluster, um, whether it be just, you know, vanilla K3s that's connected to Arc or AKS hybrid cluster, um, all those are compatible. And the main goal of Augury in Azure IoT operations is that we want to be able to take those Augury instances and these edge onboarded devices and project them as like devices and assets um, as ARM resources under Azure Device Registry and be able to see them kind of with a single pane of glass view. And also, um, this will allow for a lot easier deployment, better user experience in general. Mm -hmm. You don't have to deal with like the normal Helm charts and writing a thousand parameters in your CLI. And finally, we also aim to provide troubleshooting with OTEL and Azure Monitor, as well as a more robust end-to-end -end device to cloud security. And you know, you uh, you mentioned uh, a term that I always use, which is the projection. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. how do you actually project resources? We always talked about this in the context of Azure Arc, Arc. How do you project resources or IT assets that are deployed outside of Azure and how do you actually bring them to the control plane using Azure Arc? And what we're talking about here, we're talking about how do you project assets like leaf devices, like we mentioned, right? And project those as ARM resources eventually. Yeah, so let's quickly go over that. Yeah. Um, first, I want to you know show you what is available right now in public preview, so you know you can try this out. Um, first, you know the user goes through the portal CLI or the experience portal to configure the deployment, and then Azure IoT operations is deployed at the edge on your Arc enabled cluster. And Augury is configured with the endpoint profile URL, which is essentially the OPC UA URL that you need to be able to connect to that asset. Mm -hmm. And from here, um, Augury will talk with the Azure IoT OPC UA and work together to onboard these assets. And just like usual, Augury will create the instance CRD for this you know, onboarded asset. And finally, you know, the user can open the instance CRD file to view the details of the asset, like what it is, what kind of schema does it have, et cetera. And I want to quickly just demo this. Yeah. Um, so here I just have a GitHub code space right here, and I've deployed a K3s cluster. And as you can see, we have, you know, the Augury agent running, and we also have the OPC asset discovery pod mm -hmm. running. So now let's just check that we have the Augury instances created for the simulated PLC, which I also deployed with the mm -hmm. Azure IoT operations. And you can see that we have that simulated PLC showing up here. And now I'm just going to kind of open this and see um, in a JSON format what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, um, you can see the OPC UA endpoint URL, um, and you see a lot of this <laughs> nauseating text. But mm -hmm. you know, you can kind of, if you look closely, you can see it's like a boiler, and then you know you have the specs and labels and schemas. But, you know, all this is yeah. very hard to consume <laughs> and digest. Um, right. Like, what do I do with all this information, right? 
And yeah. so that's why I kind of want to talk about like the full story. And that's kind of why we're actively working to integrate these features um, to project these into ARM mm -hmm. resources. So let me just show you kind of our vision nor of the North Star mm -hmm. story. So steps one through four are basically, you know, the same as before. You would configure through the portal and um, deploy Azure IoT operations and Aukri again onboards these assets and creates a CRD for this discovered asset. But then um, now the user can go to the experience portal and view the discovered assets through the edge and they can choose which assets to actually import into ADR. So once they do that, these assets are actually represented as ARM resources under the Azure Device Registry so mm -hmm. that they can actually you know, view these assets um, all under a single pane of glass view and you can, they can do different things with it like configure, control, et cetera. And then you know, at the edge, the OPC UA broker will bind to the asset and that will help to standardize the data from the assets and the telemetry is sent to MQ um, via MGTT and then MQ will send all this data to our upstream connectors where um, the user will be able to view data and insights through cloud using our various you know, data services. And finally, any user, you know, custom workloads can utilize the assets by consuming all this standardized MQTT data. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at. And finally, I just want to dig a little more into these features that we're planning to integrate. Um, so I think the most important thing, like I mentioned, is this kind of universal access to devices wherever you are from the cloud, um, having access to these IoT edge devices. Um, so these are translated and projected into ADR, which allows the user to be able to control and configure them as well as you know, view insights or filter the data on them, et cetera. Um, security is also super important. So we will be, you know, in integrating all these different security features like access control, um, secrets management, authorization, or security updates. And we also will have some integrated diagnostic telemetry via OTEL. And if you don't know, OTEL or Open Telemetry is another kind of open source observability mm -hmm. interface. And so we will be using that to enable any tracing, logging, and metrics. And finally, um, we will have a unified addressing scheme. So that any you know workloads can use these assets via a common addressing scheme and interface on these you know standardized Kubernetes resources like you mentioned, yeah. um, and also consuming you know standardized data via MQTT or if it's like a video, it could be RTSP for example. I'm loving it. You know, uh, Eugene, as uh, as you are describing this, um, and thank you so much for that detailed explanation and and you know the short demo and and let's just talk about that demo here for a second because, you know, like people like to think that oh you know a demo it's a long demo and all that but there is mm -hmm. actually a lot of value in that demo because it emphasizes something um, Azure IoT operations and this is part of the conversation we also had in the previous up episodes right. Uh, the value proposition of Azure IoT operations really sits in the data pipeline, right? Uh, the rest of the stack of Azure IoT operations are either, um, you know, producers of data or consumers of data, you know, as part of as part of this entire stack. So going back to the demo, when you showed that, you know, that huge JSON that didn't, you know, look like something that someone can actually work with and digest, and then looking at the North Star and where we are going with this, this is really that that data processing, you know, that contextualization comes to mind, right? And also the fact that you're showing those assets in ADR, the Azure Device, right, uh, registry, and and being able to represent, project. We talked about it, right? Projecting those resources, that really starts to complete the picture in terms of how we are actually looking at in an IoT stack, right? Mm -hmm. Coming all the way from the Leaf devices, and then what is it that you actually do with the data? But another important thing you by projecting those resources is now that you also have 
like an IT angle to this because the IT operators, these, they are the ones that are, you know, looking at the Azure portal, making sure that, you know, everything is healthy, looking at the operational aspect of things, right? And this is very important uh, point to make here. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's, you know, precisely why Aukri is a part of Azure IoT operations and not just like it's sort of its own thing, right? Um, all these pieces kind of work together to complete this full end-to-end -end story for our customers. Yeah. I'm loving it. Thank you so much, Eugene, for uh, for joining me today. Uh, as always, I, I love Aukri. You know, it's uh, it's been on my mind for, for a couple of years now, and I'm happy that we're starting to leverage this and build this as part of the Azure IoT operations stack and the story. I think it makes sense a lot. Thank you so much, Eugene. And for the Jumpstart viewers, thank you so much for your continued support. We are continuing this video series. Stay tuned. Make sure to like, subscribe, and we're going to see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.